right back at you. It's Ron and Hope, unfiltered, real, raw, relevant. This is what marriage is. It's <laughs> lipstick. Oh, when did you drink my tea? A little bit ago. Oh, you In go the ahead office. And tell them what it is. Go ahead and tell them what it is. What? Real. Already did. Real, raw, relevant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I did. I forgot to take the lipstick off. Yeah, she can't be There's incognito a tip. with the take pink your lipstick, lipstick off yep. of the straw when you. Steal our drink yes. okay. without our knowledge. <laughs> and I like you drinking after me anyway because you backwash. Remember a couple yeah, of episodes you ago you backwash. backwash? But no, I don't. So anyway, we are glad that you're here today. We got some fun topics, but you know what? Today's not that fun. Today, challenging. Today it's challenging. challenging. Today's and challenging. It's really about how to sustain success and how to go the distance in life. You know, I think that's one of the hardest things. We all, most of us start out in life like, raw. we're going to do this. We're going to jump into this diet. We're going to jump into this new business. We're going to jump into this project. And then life happens. But yeah, then boredom sits, sets in. Yeah, like Frustration burnout. sets in. Yes, tired. Uh, money kids, problems, finances. kids. So how do you go the distance? How do you end strong? I want to end strong. And every one of those things you talk about, every one of them has to be managed. Yeah. Because you keep you keep the goals, you keep the dreams in sight, but you got to manage everything that life brings you away because you will not be dealing in your 50s with what you did in your 20s. You'll not be dealing with in your 40s what you did. I mean, the, the, all these different seasons, you're headed in the same direction, but it's like going through terrain. You, you go through rain, you go through wind, you go through sand, you go through desert. You go, you know, so it's all on the way, but I got to be able to manage the heat. I got to be able to manage the cold. I got to have the rain. I got to have the snow. That's kind of what life is. How do I stay on the road but manage all the seasons. Don't derail. Yeah, don't 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 stop. Don't quit. Don't fall apart. Yeah, and uh, got to give a little bit of credit where credit's due. We just had a couple of days recently with John Maxwell. Yes, it's and, glorious. Uh, and he talked really. He talked about some of these things in a way where it would be really slanted to lead pastors. Yeah. We don't want to do that. No, we want to take in it life. and we want to rework it and. And and put our own wording into it to just talk about life in general. Um, if you know, I, it's easier <coughs> to get married than stay married. Than to stay married. Okay, here's what right? I used to say years That's ago. What we're talking about. Uh, wonderful, wonderful friend, and in some ways a mentor of mine, Bishop Tony Miller, who's gone on to be with the Lord. He made this statement back in the '90s. I'll never forget it. I've quoted it a thousand times. It's easier to obtain than it is to maintain. Yeah, so true. It's easier to obtain. And I've, I've used this analogy. Uh, you got people in the Hall of Fame. You got people who win the Oscars. You got people with a PhD. Uh, the people with PhDs, they didn't go to class one time. <laughs> they went to Would class nice. over and over and over again for many, many yes. years. And after, that, after they sustained it, their goal was met. A person who's in the Hall of Fame, they didn't hit a home run one time. Right. They hit a home run over and over yeah. and over again it's over consistent. a 15-year period. Very consistent. So uh, that's that's a little bit about what we're aiming is not the, the flash in the pan life, not life was good in my 30s, yeah. but it sucks now, you yeah. know. But we are seeing, baby doll, uh, especially in ministry, uh, we see people that are actually ministers, and then we see people that are actually in our churches, in our flock. We see people coming off the rails. Yeah. We see people um, taking hard falls. We have had our own cup of sorrow yeah. touch our house when we woke up the next morning and knew if anything would ever be the same right. again. And so uh, these, these will chop you down a notch, yeah. uh, chop you down to a stump. We call, really. it, we call it when life happens. Yeah, it's when life happens. And so we're not talking to you out of something we got out of a book. We're talking to you out of many experiences with people that we love. Right. And then we're talking to you, uh, some even out of our own experiences, how by the grace and the mercy of Almighty God, even in the most difficult of circumstances that happen in our life, our family, our marriage, somehow God Mm -hmm. let us keep the wheels on the rails, and we're still moving this day. So what, what, what are the underlying qualities that help you keep going when life happens and when you do get derailed, because I think we got to um, just hit that myth 
that you can go through life and life never touches you. You can go through life and you never have bumps in the road. You you can go through life where tribulation and trial doesn't hit your house. I just don't believe Jesus that that's that. even realistic to think. Jesus talked about that. In Matthew 7, he said, he said there's two houses. He said, there's a man that builds on the sand. He said, mm-hmm. there's a man that builds on the rock. Nobody knows what the house is built on because you can't see it. All you see is cosmetics. All you see is structure. And cosmetically and structurally, both these houses look fine. Yeah, it didn't talk about the house. Mm-hmm. Act, that, that's what fine. it looked like. Or exactly. Just talk about it, the foundation. Says, but one, the man who heard the word, but he don't pay any attention, that's sand. Yeah. The man who hears and does the word, it becomes his lifestyle, becomes his faith, says he built his on the rock. And here's another thing. Neither were exempt from storms. Neither. So just because you got saved, <laughs> just because you got saved on Easter and everything has not been fixed in your life, right? Uh, just just because you know you've accepted Christ, nobody is exempt from storms. My storm may not be yours, but everybody's going to have them. It's not a it's not an issue or a question of whether or not you're going to have a storm. It's a question of whether or not you'll be standing yeah. when the storm is can passed. You, can you get back up? You know, though a righteous man <laughs> falls seven times, but he gets back up. What makes up him righteous? Not that the he fact that he didn't up. fall, uh, that yeah. he failed, but that he got back up yeah. every time. I saw Michael Jordan had a quote a while back. He said, I failed, I failed, I failed, mm, and I failed. So good. He said, that's why I succeeded. That's so good. I thought that was so powerful. In other words, yeah. no failure stopped him. I think he people think going. being successful is that you never have a failure. Mm-mm. And that's just not true. And we talked about the quote from Bill Gates to talk about Bill Gates. I don't know anything about Bill Bill Gates, so don't, you know, don't don't judge me on that. I'm just uh, it's obvious he's a he's a brilliant man. Um he said this. He said success is a lousy teacher. Mm. That's a powerful it statement. Is from one of the richest men in the world. Yeah. He said it's a power, I said it's a lousy teacher. He said because it trains you that you can't lose. And uh, I've probably experienced that. You know, there was a day where God was so good to redemption. Mm-hmm. It was like everything turned to gold. If we did it, it succeeded. I didn't think that was me. I didn't think but we just as a people, it was a strong thing God had built and no matter what community effort, season. yeah, it was just. And I remember we built an Imagine Center, five point seven million, because I just wanted to create, keep creating community. We had, we had all these big events, were Christmas bits and July the Fourth mm-hmm. events, and we were just that church that was serving the community. Well, I wanted another place, and we did that in '09. Well, 2010, the recession hit. Yeah, and this big, strong, worldwide, global ministry, we were inches away from declaring bankruptcy. Right, I remember. I mean inches. I remember the phone calls. I remember, <laughs> I remember laying off 17 single moms in one day. And cried. And I mean, I felt like the devil. Yeah. I mean, I went you home You came and home and put and your head wept, in my lap. And, and I cried. wept. And just, so success is a kind of a lousy teacher because if I look back, as much as I hate this, I've probably learned more mm. from pain. Yeah. Than I ever learned from a victory. Yeah, and you know we don't like waiting either. No. Nobody likes to wait. Speaking of Especially waiting, me. speaking of waiting, nobody likes to wait to get paid either, right? <laughs> who who likes to wait on their paycheck? I don't. Listen, especially when you got bills due. You got bills, I got bills, all God children got bills. Mm-hmm. And nobody likes to wait on a paycheck. Well, the good thing is there's chime. Listen, I would not tell you about things that I am not a an advocate for. Chime is amazing. Listen, you can get your paycheck up to two days early. Don't that make you want to do a how happy do dance? That? I, I know. Even, I know it's that. just amazing. Two days early. With All our their technicians direct, in the room are looking. I know they're looking like, going, what? Yeah, what? I want to do huh? that. Mm-hmm. With their direct deposit. Listen, Chime is more about, it's it's more than just getting your paycheck early, though, which is like enough, right? But it's also an award-winning mobile app, Ron, um, for checking accounts, debit cards, um, and an optional savings account. It's like a whole financial hub for you. It's for like a little Chime. financial management center. It really is. It's so good for young couples, for young people who really need accountability for managing their finances, getting their paycheck early. So what are you waiting for? 
hopefully not your paycheck, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, get started today with Chime. Applying for a free account takes less than two to three minutes, literally two Mm -hmm. to three minutes. So get started today at chime.com slash Ron and Hope. Say it again. Say it again. That's chime.com slash Ron and Hope. All right. Talking about sustainable success, talking about two houses, talking about both of them have the storms, but one house is able to sustain the storms Mm -hmm. and one house gets wiped out. Let's just throw two or three things out there. Stay stay with us because actually these are not deep. <laughs> Pardon me, but we talked about before we started the podcast, we looked, I said this is gonna be challenging. Um throw the first one out there. The the first step to sustaining success. I wanna end well. I don't want to come off the rails. I don't want my life and family to fall apart. Uh I I I don't want to be debilitated in my later years. How do we do that? i tell you what, I'll take the first one. Okay. <clears throat> I think we need to be self-aware. Mm. I talked about this with both staffs mm. yesterday yeah. on both coasts, to be self-aware. That's so hard. Define that. Do you that, understand no, how look, hard that very is? Very hard. To look at yourself in the mirror and say, you suck, mm-hmm. or you're lazy, or you have no discipline. You know, we, we have self-talk, so we want to talk to ourselves, and we, we even tell ourselves how awesome well, you, we are. You've, so got pop, to be, you've got pop psychology to tell to say good yeah, things yeah, to yeah, yourself. Yeah. Okay? Speak tell your yourself good positive things. Positive yeah. affirmations all the time. But, and I believe in it. We believe in it. It's yes. faith. But let, but when I'm talking about I'm looking at you, right? This camera right here. <laughs> to be self-aware basically means do you know you? Do you have honest conversations with yourself? Mm. And most people, I'm just going to tell you, do not. And that is hard to do, even somebody who is aware of it and tries to. It is hard to have honest conversations with yourself. Because let me tell you why. We judge ourselves on intention, but we judge everybody else on action. Yeah, we do. <laughs> So we judge everybody else on what really happened, but we want everybody to judge us. Well, it yeah. was in my heart, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, even like saying, well, <laughs> God, I want you to get them, but God, I want you to give me mercy. Yeah. God, give me mercy, mm-hmm. but make them pay. Yeah. It's kind of the way we are about being self-aware. Self-aware means you you got to be honest with yourself. I'm 53. You and look good, though. I, thank you. I'll Come take on, that man. right now. Good. Anything now like I'm that, I'll take it. I'm very aware and, that uh, you look good. You need to quit rubbing me like that. Um, anyway, 53 years old, I'm not proud of this. I probably, well, oh, mid-40s, last seven or eight years, have probably had the most real conversations with mm-hmm. Ron. With Ron. Uh, are, are you... Honest about your blind spots. Okay. Honest about these are my dominant strengths and these are my dominant weaknesses. Are you honest with yourself about what it's like to work with you? Mm. What is it like to be on a team with you? No, what is it really like? Do you, do you, you know, what is it really like to be your friend? Is it a weight? Is it a drain? And these are not conversations where people are having to call you out. This is the way you talk to yourself. Yeah. That's self-awareness. Yeah. I believe great leaders are self-aware. Putting yourself in their shoes. Exactly right. And um, I've, I've always said this, have these kind of conversations with yourself so somebody else doesn't have to. Oh, that's so good. So somebody else doesn't have to embarrass you. Yeah, so somebody else doesn't have call to call you, you out. So you're honest with yourself. So just let me give a few examples. Um, in, in my own life, uh, I, I communicate to millions now. So in my mind, okay, God's given me some gifts, and, and over time, God's helped me to become an effective communicator. But people in the office get frustrated with me because I don't communicate well. I'm not good with emails. I'm not good with timely responses. Now, 10 years ago, I don't know that I'd admitted that. I would have said something like this. Well, you don't know my schedule. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. Take it. Do it. What now? What'd you just say? I'm, I'm not good at what? I'm, I'm uh, very adept at computer skills, <laughs> and I'm great one-on-one with people. And, Are you good uh, with emails? No. 
No, do you, I'm not. Do you get back with people real good? You're better, Ron. I respond. You are. I respond. But I'm not turn timely. This off. I was I'm trying to get all the, now. the good no, stuff. No, you're not going to get me on video and hold it against me. <laughs> Make me give you money. But Ron, you have gotten better. I know. That's what I'm talking. About. I've been self aware. I've yes. had honest conversations. But what ten years ago, if if I would have told myself, well, nobody's as busy as I am. Right, right, right. No, I would have defended. Justified. I would have defended or justified slash justified mm-hmm. that behavior. But the fact is, I need to be a more effective communicator because it frustrates everybody when it's in my mind, yeah. and I think because it's in my mind, it's in theirs. Yeah. And so I've had to learn these things that I do not like are important to effective and efficient running of a ministry. And so I've come to the place, you know, I'm not good at this. I'm not good at this. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. I'm not good with ideas. I don't know why. I don't know why God let me lead a ministry because usually great leaders have great ideas. I usually am not the idea guy. I hope somebody else in the room has the idea. Then I'm an implementer. Yeah. I'm good. I you can, can put, put it in its yes, right I can. place. I can put feet to it. Yeah. You give me an idea, I can put feet to it. Yeah. But I usually don't come up with the idea. Yeah. Uh, and, and if Thank you put, God for a good team. Yeah, if you put me in a think tank room, I probably don't contribute much. Con- but when somebody comes up with a great idea, I can have that thing rolling in a week. Yeah. So I have that. to understand these are my strengths, these are my weaknesses. Uh, self-aware. Um, I, had to, I had to learn with you uh, that you can win an argument and still lose. That's so good. Um, when we used to argue, I didn't want to quit till I was right. Do or, some, or you knew you were right. You, so, you just wanted me to say you were right. But I mean, that, you, now, I realize that's not... But necess- you lost. I realize that's not necessarily <laughs> a strength that I can win an argument. Right. It may be a great weakness because sometimes it just... Don't it's matter. not worth it. It just don't matter. It's not matter. worth it. And, and I, I, unfortunately, I wish I could say 28 and 35 and 37, I knew these things. But, I, but just knowing what we went through in our timeline, probably, this, this, probably mid this to helps. early 40. This color right here. Are you even listening to anything I am, I'm saying? But I'm so enamored by how good you look. Why is that? Your is it silver? And this silver fox right here. I think silver fox. You told me the other day it was white. Equals wisdom. Okay. So y'all listening, Listen, y'all don't I'm have the gray be, yet. I'm trying to be real raw and relevant. She's I'm being real. Doing this right here. Okay. But that, but self-aware, what would you say? Okay, I've been honest. Yeah. I've told about three or four areas of my life where I stink. Okay, what's, what's the place where you've had to become self-aware? Meanie? <laughs> <laughs> Let me help you, <laughs> Meanie. I can't think of any right now. <laughs> you can't think of any dominant weaknesses? <laughs> Maybe that's your dominant weakness, <laughs> that you can't think of any dominant weaknesses. <laughs> no, I have plenty, actually. I have a notebook of my weaknesses that I work on. But I would say overarching of my life, the number one weakness I have had in my life, and you will probably say yes and amen, has been discipline. Mm, yeah. I would say that had been, oh, because I am very creative, I'm artsy, I, I was a musician, singer, and just, you know, the happy-go-lucky, want to You are a free flow, spirit. You are a free spirit. You know, just what am I going to do today? And what do I, do I want to exercise in the morning or in the afternoon? Do I want to exercise at all? You know, what do I feel today? So I think over... And you married Mr. Structure. Yes. Ooh, that was a, a conflict mm-hmm. waiting to happen. But I think in my life, I, I embraced that that was who I was and did not want to work on discipline. Instead of an area of change. Instead of an area Mm. of change. And so over my life, I have tried to become, even like, okay, time I'm getting up, this is when I'm going into the office. You have changed that. And You've changed a lot in that. I have become more disciplined. Yes, you have. The older I've become. Well, let me ask you, can I ask you another question? And I don't even know the answer to this. I'm asking you because you're going down a good road here. When did you start challenging yourself in that area? So when did you come aware? You know what? When, I don't need to when justify my life this. Fell apart. Okay, uh, mid forties, early early mid, early forties. When I was like, you know what? Clearly, what I have been doing has Ain't working. is not working. So I had to back all the way up and really evaluate. You know the pe- you know how people who say, well, that's just my personality. 
um, just because it's your personality at that point. I probably doesn't mean heard you say that back that, in those days. Yeah. That's what God wants you to be. I believe our personality develops from the way we were raised, our experience. The fruit of the Spirit. Yeah, what you put in you, who you surround yourself with. Um, so you can't use that excuse. So I had to back up and say, who really am I? Who is hope? And where, where is hope weak? Where, is, where am I missing the mark? You know, of the call of God on my life. And I had to say, you know, what do I need to start doing and what do I need to stop doing to be everything that God's called me now, to how be? Did you, where did you find the power to change? Because being aware and journaling things, and it still is not change. No. It ain't change till you change it. So how, a lot of people say, okay, I've done the, I've done the reflective part. I've done the introspection. I I've, had to I've re- hate <coughs> where I was. And desire something. I had to hate where I was instead of embracing where I was and making excuses for where I was. I had to want change more. I had to want to be better more. So the power, the the pain of staying the same had become greater than the power pain of change. Yeah, yeah. So in other words, you looked at change and it became because where friend. I was wasn't good. Right. And it was going to be hard either way. Stay there all these terrible consequences or be in pain to change and get good results. Because I think the power to change is where a lot of people would say, I'm willing to look at myself. Yeah. I'm willing to write things down and and challenge, but then the actual power to change a personality and lifestyle and and attitude and way of thinking. And it's not quick. No, it's it's not easy. Um, it's it's a lifelong process of growing. Growth it's does a not journey. happen quickly. Yes, it's like a child journey, yeah. born into the world. I mean, it takes a long time to grow and to change. And growth hurts. Not good more Just, a, just a muscle to grow a muscle. You have to put pressure on it over time to make it grow. Consistent. Over Consistently over time. Consistent pressure. People ask me. They say, Pastor, you know. I can tell physically you try to take care of yourself. I'm grateful for that because actually I work very hard to take care of myself. But they say, "What well, you must really work out hard. I really, mm-hmm. I really don't work out that hard. I tell them, I said, the thing is I don't miss. That's so good. It's not that I go in there and I'm doing these it's Terminator so workouts. No, I don't walk out and can't walk holding on to stuff right. and, and burned out my muscle fatigue. I, I don't work out, but... I don't miss. So good, It's the consistency of the fact that I don't miss. And so the long and short of it is self-awareness is a big key. Let me say this one more time, okay? Having honest conversations with you so that nobody else has to. That's good. What's another one? I would say... Accountability. That's exactly... Ron, that's what I was going to say is accountability. Well, we we talk about these things all the time. Seriously. Uh, We just don't do this on a podcast. To be able to go the distance... That's what we're talking about, being able to go the distance, to be successful for a long time, not just one month, not one week, not one year, over your lifetime. And I would say your circle is so important. Really, your circle is so important. A wrong, a wrong one can just... Ah. Uh. You know, your mom and daddy, my mom and daddy, they're country people, so they would say, you lay down with dogs, you get up with fleas. You know, you they had all these funny sayings, but you, birds of a feather flock together. The Bible's a little more spiritual. Yeah. Good, bad company corrupts good character. And that yeah. always intrigued me, that scripture. Bad company corrupts good character. You would think that the good, right, would go in and change the bad. But it's the bad That's usually not how that can change the good. Yep. So you can't say, well, I'm just going to go in there and spread my light. And I'm going to go in there and change this man. Most people get their life put, light put out Yeah. When they, when they do that. Accountability is not just an accountability mentor. Accountability. I appreciate everything Promise Keepers back in the 90s. I mean, trying to find someone and whenever you're about to watch porn or whenever you're about to call somebody. You know, call some, uh, or, or, you know, whenever you're about to do that, you know, call your accountability partner. I appreciate all that. There's nothing wrong with any of it. But in my life, there was never somebody when I was getting ready to sin. <laughs> right. I, I mean, it's just not. And so... There, when I say accountability, I'm not talking about necessarily a person. I'm talking about your spouse. 
Yeah. Um, my, my, my marriage is my accountability partner, mm-hmm. which means my wife cannot be surprised when I reveal a struggle. Yeah. Especially ladies, if your man ever comes to you and reveals struggle, don't drop your jaw. How dare you? Bl- because he just told you the last one he ever will. So Hope had to earn that trust over time, but my struggles usually I bring to you. Yeah, And then vice versa. Vice versa. You have to be willing to accept... What the your flaw. accountability partner is bringing to you, the flaw. They're mm-hmm. saying, if I came to you and said, Ron, I really want to talk to you about something. Mm-hmm. I see this in you. And mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's really hurting me or mm-hmm. it's harming your leadership. This ain't going anywhere or it's good. Not going, yeah. yeah. And you can't be defensive. You have to know that they love you and they want the best. I remember t- several times in our marriage, I've come to you and you would get frustrated with me. And I'd say, Ron. I, we're on the same team. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this because I'm just telling you this because I want you to be better. And that's hard when you got somebody who is your spouse and you want to put your best foot forward and they're coming to you saying, uh, you stink in this and you're not doing Can, a good l- job l- at let's this. Let's be real raw and relevant. It's hard for the person you're sleeping with to call you out. Yeah. You but know, you're, you're my lover. And the next day, you're calling But I'm you're also your helper. Out. Exactly right. And those are dynamics that have to be managed in marriage. I'll tell you another thing that keeps me accountable, being a pastor. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to disappoint people. I, w- I, want, I want to, I have to be able to get up in a pulpit with a clear conscience. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not above it, certainly, but I've, there's just something about me. If I know I'm not right with God, I lose all my confidence. Yeah, you do. I lose all my confidence. <laughs> and if I know I'm right with God, I can uh, hit that thing like a lion. And it's not even just if you're right with God. <laughs> if you're not right with me. Yeah, I lose if, my confidence. If me and Ron have had a bad day or it's Saturday. Saturday oh, my gosh. <laughs> and we've had oh an gosh. argument or a tiff or I, we're not speaking or... Or whatever. I mean, it can be something small. But I can't Ron, preach. I can be in the bed asleep, and it's eleven o'clock I at night. Wake her up. Twelve o'clock at night, even, and he'll come tap on me. Hope I need to talk to you. I got to get. We got to get this right, or I can't even go preach tomorrow. I, and I honestly can't. I'm just telling you. I, can't, I said I, now I'm mad at you for two things because no you confidence. woke me up. And uh, but I, you do get frustrated because I've woken you up many times over <laughs> yes, the years. You have. But the fact is, I think. You value the fact that yeah. stuff bothers me. Yeah, that you, you want you, us to be you right. Wanna, you want to you want to be married to a man that if he's done Aww. wrong, it bothers him. It bothers him. And so you know, but being and I've often thought of the things that because of what I do for God, what has that kept me from? That's good. That's the, really the good. The accountability that I have a service unto God and unto His people has kept certain boundaries in my life. Not only that, my accountability to God. Um, does it, does it, the word sin means missing the mark. It needs to bother you. Yeah. If I'm not trying to preach, but it needs to bother you if you miss the mark. If I know I have sinned against God, I hope I'm just, I, You'll I stay have up to all get, night. I've I have to you. get away. You have seen me. Yeah. If I know, if I know that there's been a, an area in my life that contradicts the, the grace on me and the call on my life and the goodness of God on my life, man, is, there's a deep-seated conviction that comes, and I have to make things yeah. right with God. So I know people, you may have an accountability partner. You may have a, a friend or a father or a mother in the faith that you look to like that. But to me, it ain't just that. To me, it can happen in your home. It can happen in your marriage. It can happen with God. Yeah, I was about to say God's word. Ultimately, yeah. Is, I mean, it'll smack you in the face. I it mean, will. it always holds you accountable. It is a mirror into your heart. And, you know, if you're not in the word, I mean, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand how you can stay on the straight and narrow, how your marriage can function properly, how you know what to do with your money, how, how you know what, how to live this Christian life if people are not practicing spiritual disciplines right. in prayer and in the Word. It just blows my mind, but Let's these are just some. More. Let's throw out one more. I don't know how much time we got. I was looking About for a counter. Minutes. 
Humility. Humility. Now this is more of an attitude. You know, accountability is something you put in place mm -hmm. in your life to protect you. Self-aware is being honest with yourself about dominant strengths, dominant weaknesses. Humility is a posture. It's a posture of the heart. Ego is like plutonium. Yeah. It's like plutonium. We've seen it a hundred times. Ooh. <laughs> when it gets to be me, myself, and I, and what about mm -hmm. me? When those questions start coming in your mind, like, talking about going nowhere good, that's going nowhere good when you start saying those things to yourself. Humility is the answer to ego. Humility is the answer to pride. I define humility as this. I can't brag about it because it's not me. Mm. I, how can I be, how can I have an ego about a life that I didn't give me, breath that I didn't put in my yeah. lungs, a gift that I didn't mm -hmm. have myself. Mm -hmm. Everything I have is stewardship and is mm -hmm. a gift of God. Mm. And so the way I try to walk in a posture humble before the Lord it's not about you is anyway. the only understanding. I used to have a plaque yeah. on my pulpit, in a big pool yeah. wooden pulpit, and a plaque at the top of it. Every time I laid out my Bible and my notes, the plaque at the top said, it's not, not about, about you. you. And I would read that to myself. Yeah. And I was getting up in front of thousands of people, but it's not about me. No. And so I, I, think, I think humility is key. And you can't get up and talk about how humble you are because that's pride. That's not humble. That's pride. <laughs> so I'm not talking about how humble. I'm just talking about it should to be, be aware. Posture. To be aware yeah. and, and a posture. And we should always say, God, I Thank want you. to be humble. Yes, and, and that you are understanding that every good thing about you, Came you are him. stewarding. Yeah, yeah, every good and perfect gift yeah. comes down from the Father above. So we are it's not mine. glory. Exactly, it's not mine. Yeah. Uh, I, Bishop Tony taught me that too, yeah. deflecting glory. I remember people come up and say, oh, you didn't. And I'm like, well, I just, I'm grateful. God, God is, God God's good. Me God's anyway. good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, God uses me. I always tried to practice. Let's let it hit me and bounce off and try to give it to God. Because the minute they tell you you're great and you say, you know what, don't it, I am great. It. Yeah. yeah. And uh, my, my daddy always told me, don't believe all your press clippings. And, uh, and my daddy would tell you, say, you ain't that good. I remember one time, Hope, my dad, my, my dad, was, everybody knows the humblest and kindest man, he but my was. dad would challenge me. Yeah. And when he saw God beginning to blow our life up, oh, he'd, he would challenge me. Yeah. And I remember one time after, what was it called? It wasn't, it wasn't back to Acts and it wasn't 212. It was in Kingdom Momentum. Yes. Kingdom Momentum. <laughs> I mean, we'd, we'd had that, I think Eddie Long, and that was when Miles Monroe was strolling through, and we had the who's who mm -hmm. of Christian speakers. Place was packed like ants on an ant hill. We were streaming live, and, and my dad was there. And after it was over, we had everybody's coming up, you know, awesome comfort. Man, this was crazy. That was nuts. The way y'all started this thing out, I've never. And my daddy come up and looked at me and said, You ain't that good. He did. I remember it. Remember that? He said, You ain't that good. Yeah, and it hurts your feelings. He just <laughs> would bring you back. But yeah. it was, he knew what I needed. Yeah, he did. Because I was getting 100 compliments. So and my, he actually was your accountability he was partner. My, he came in and said, I just want you to know, you ain't that good. Yeah. And uh, what was he trying to say to me? God did this. Yes, it did. And don't you ever lose sight of that, Ron Carpenter. Yeah. So that's really the bottom line, how you can go the distance. Mm. You know, Many of you listening got tons of gifts. Self-aware. Tons of gifts. So, tons of personality. You got a booming business. Uh, you know, you you're thriving. But especially if you've experienced success at yeah, a young age. Yeah. But can you go the distance? I want to be everything God's called me to be. I want to do everything God's called me to do. I want to have everything God says I can have. But I don't want it for this amount of time. You know, I, I want to be able to go the distance and not just do and have. I want my family intact. I want my kids to love me. I want the people who's worked with me my whole life to say it was a, a blessing to be in their life. I, I want that good life. You know, I want the good relationships and, and we want that for you. So we're just here throwing out some tips for you. Take it, use it. Uh, recap what we talked about, Ron. Three, Three things. things 
to help sustain long-term success. This is just three simple three. things. Have have real honest conversations with yourself. Self-aware. Self-aware. Number two. <laughs> and the and clock said it's time to quit. Number two, be accountable to somebody, something. Give somebody the right to call you out. Yeah. And then number three, posture yourself in humility, which means there's an understanding. Every good thing that happens, I didn't do it. It's the gift of God. We love you guys. We, we appreciate you so much. Blessings. Thanks for being here. And Share this thank podcast. Thank you for having this. Share it with everybody yeah. and let them know if we've had anything we've talked about that's touched you. We'll see you next time.